All right, so Steve-O has a new special coming out, and he's been going hard trying to promote this thing. You know, he's making the rounds on all the podcasts, and he spends a lot of time talking about it, probably too much time, but that's Steve-O for you. You know, he loves promoting shit, and you could tell he's proud of this special that he made, and at least it's more of a jackass kind of thing. It's not just stand-up comedy, which was a smart move from him, but some of his podcast appearances promoting it haven't gone very well, but I don't know if it matters. And, you know, not going well for him is just he's not able to talk about his special as long as he wanted to. Like, somebody asked him how the Adam Friedland show went, and he said, as far as promoting what I was there to promote, I would rank it low on a scale of effectiveness. But the podcast did perform pretty well, and a lot of people are talking about it, mostly because it was just an awkward appearance from him, and he didn't get along very well with them. And you could just tell he didn't know what he got himself into. I think he said one of his friends or his manager or something told him to do it. I don't think he knew much about the podcast. Like his friend probably just told him that it would be a great way to promote his special and he was in. But unfortunately he didn't think it was. But I think it's mostly because when he tried to talk about it, Adam and Nick kept interrupting him and making jokes about it, which I'm sure annoyed him. And I think he wanted just a better reaction from them, you know, for them to be really excited or something. Super oh, let's get the, what's the name of your special? Let's get it's that. It's called Steve-O's oh. Bucket List. And what the bucket list is, is like super. You just shot for shot remake of the bucket list. Yeah. With you. It's just utterly fucking forbidden <laughs> shit that was like never supposed to happen. But then I was like out of ideas and I was like, okay, I guess I'll do those. Forbidden, like the racist ball. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. penis lynching. Yeah. yeah, forbidden, like the. You the, say the word in it? No, I don't no, say any. Good. I don't say the word, but mm-hmm. I. But I definitely. This is, I'm Stevo, and this is the scene from Die Hard Two. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's definitely uh, <laughs> some triple X rated shit, though. Like I um. Like fucking. I. Full penetration. I I masturbate while uh, I'm totally naked. I got another man strapped to my back. I'm in an airplane, and I'm. <laughs> To where, like, once I pass the point of no return, I give the sign. I'm like, get the fuck out of the plane. And so that I'm coming out of the plane, uh-huh. coming out of the plane. It's like Band of Brothers. Dude. Yeah. That's awesome. That is literally what our grandparents did in, yeah. in Belgium. You're like Captain Winter. On the front. <laughs> they went skyjacking in Belgium? Yeah. yeah. Well, they're, wow. yeah, they're, they're paratroopers. Yeah. You know? Shit, I thought I was the first one to do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. they saw their friends die in, in front of their eyes. <laughs> What is, I mean, a major part of Jackass is like this game of gay chicken that all boys play with each other, right? Mm-hmm. The game all of like... gay chicken. And also, he just didn't get their humor very well. And he said he didn't like where they kept trying to take the conversations. So he was not into it. And you could tell he probably just wanted to leave. Like towards the end, you could tell he was checked out and he's just sitting there vaping the whole time while they're talking. And then they asked him if he wanted to leave. They're like, it's all right if you want to go. So are you checked Whatever, out? Do you want to go? You're in love with Vinny. It's not. Do you want to go? Are you done? <laughs> Did you have a bad time? It's okay. No, no, you can totally dude, I'm not even going to say I had a bad time. But that means yes. You're just not going to say it. It's okay. Wait, you can have a bad time. Dude, this podcast sucks. Well, really it's all right. Guys. It's not, yeah. You do absolutely did not offend. And, it's okay. Uh, my executive assistant, Isaac, gave me the heads up about how you clowns operate. And what did he say? He's like, hey, this, say, this sucks. And he, said, not he said, hey, heads up, all Isaac. He said, hey, I just want to give you the heads up. You know, these guys, like, the you know, the... They'll probably come at you with some. We're like, not coming. We're not at coming at you. He said they might. He said they said they might come at me. Why do you say this? When some Why would you, Steve, 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 you're 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 you. you're you're a beloved cultural oh, figure. Oh, thanks. You no, changed we, my life. I love we, it. I love that. Thank we you. love you. I, I don't know why. I he likened you to part. Oliver Tree. You know, like Oliver Tree. I thought, like weird I thought, trolling. No, 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 no. That's not. I, we don't even know who that is. Did you compare us to Oliver Twist? What was that fucking name? <laughs> I have no idea. What did you say? <laughs> who the fuck did you say, <laughs> Oliver? They're just like Oliver. What was his name? Tool. <laughs> Is he we there? have Steve-O, he's got nice, you have cool glasses, guy. He actually guy. happens to be, like, one of my best friends. Oh, oh. okay. Okay. I'm just... So he doesn't pull any of that bullshit with me. Are we, has he, has anyone pulled bullshit on me? We haven't <laughs> pulled bullshit. <laughs> We're honored. Right. We're, yeah. yeah, dude, likewise. I'm good. Yeah, so that was a pretty awkward appearance from him, but it was hilarious, and a lot of people are talking about it. 
and he said it was low on the scale of effectiveness for promotion, but I think he's underestimating it a little bit. Also, one of the top comments on the YouTube video for the podcast is mentioning Steve-O Special. They said they're there for the live show, and they said there is a severely handicapped wheelchair person in the front row on the left side moaning and making noises. And then about 10 minutes into the show, Steve-O's like, guys, what the F is going on here? Can you stop with the noises? And they wheeled the guy out. See, that's great promotion right there. I mean, you should have talked about that during the podcast, but you could tell his favorite moments from it or when they're doing ad reads. Then he'd start to perk up, like this comment says, and you'd get involved, and he did most of the ad reads for them. Like, he's basically just a salesman at this point. He loves promoting shit. There, this is uh, a diffusive device, mm -hmm. and it's got a core. The core goes in there, and so that it yeah. flavors air. Yeah. So like this is how you can like change bad habits into good habits. You know, like mm -hmm. filthy habits that make you right. stink. Yeah, and I always see people talk about how many ad reads Steve O does during his podcast. They think it's way too many. And also, if you remember last time he's on Rogan, he brought a whole bag of stuff to promote and then Joe Rogan destroyed his butt wipes. But I think Steve O, he needs to take it easy a little bit. You know, you can't go into a podcast thinking all right, this is just another audience I can sell shit to. Like, people definitely get turned off by that kind of thing. And also, people get turned off if you don't know who the host of the podcast is, which is what happened on Danny Brown's podcast. I kind of felt bad for him because early on, he's talking about how big of a fan he is of Steve-O, and he said he watched his new special. He's a fan of Jackass, and he also influenced him to get sober. So he's giving him all this credit and talking about how he's a big fan. And then like 10 to 20 minutes in, Steve, I was like, so what do you do again? Like, what do you do on stage? I was like, I'm actually enjoying the process of just being in the studio or even being on stage. That created like, it became almost like therapy for me, man. And what do you do on stage? I'm, I do music. You do music? Mm -hmm. Nice, man. Yeah, so some of these podcasts that Steve-O goes on, he doesn't even know who the hell he's talking to, which is just kind of rude. But also I feel like it's another example that just shows he's there to promote something. And this podcast, this probably was low on the effectiveness scale for him because a lot of the comments are talking about how they thought Steve-O was being a dick on this podcast and didn't like the way he was acting because obviously he didn't know who Danny Brown was and people just felt like he came off as arrogant. Also, he went on this rant about video games towards the end of the podcast, which is always a bold move. You know, that upsets a lot of people when you start talking shit about video games, especially if you're going to say that video games are dangerous. I think that video games are uh, really, really dangerous. I, you know, I, I do. I think that uh, people sit there on their fucking ass mm -hmm. all day long playing a goddamn video game where their physical health just turns and <laughs> turns into absolute. Garb like the the human body becomes an actual piece of garbage when you just sit on the sofa fucking all day every day, and you're playing these video games. You 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 accomplish literally nothing. Yeah, so I think this podcast maybe he would have been better off not doing, but there actually was one moment where he won some people over and got some people's attention when he started calling out Tom Segura for being too greedy and flaunting his wealth and hating on poor people. Is there any money left over for you? No. <laughs> I'm guessing I'm guessing there's probably not that much money left over for the guys in the booth either. Oh, it's man. all Tom and Christina just running around <laughs> getting on private jets. Uh huh. Making fun of poor people. Yep. <laughs> God damn it. All right. <laughs> Next up. <we> got... <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Everybody's out here busting their ass, making this beautiful art, and dumpster diving. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of people like that, and they thought it was funny. But also a lot of people are like, is Steve-O really the one that should be calling out Tom Segura? You know, because it seems like he's also very greedy, and people feel like he might be starting to take himself a little too seriously now. But at least Tom, he didn't have any problems with what Steve-O said here. You know, he probably just thought it was funny, or maybe he didn't hear about it. Because Steve-O, he's just recently on First Date with Lauren Compton, which is part of Tom's whole podcasting network. And in the beginning of this episode, Steve-O was going off about his special. Like, he was going into extreme detail about the first scene, which he already explained on multiple other podcasts. 
like on the H3 podcast, he talked about it and then he just played the whole scene for him. But it was funny to see him on this show because he's just going on and on about the special and you can see Lauren, she's trying to get it on track, but she's having trouble and he just keeps bringing it back to his special. And it's funny, right in the beginning, Steve-O tells her that he searched her podcast on YouTube and he's really impressed with her numbers, which I'm sure that's not the only thing he's impressed by. But, of course, Steve-O, all he cares about is how many views the podcast is getting. That's the first thing he says to her. Thank you. It's good to be here. Um, I looked up your podcast on YouTube, was very impressed by your numbers. Thank you. And this is probably one of Steve-O's favorite podcasts, just because he was able to talk about his special for, like, five minutes uninterrupted, pretty much. So the first thing you see is I grab roses out of a vase, and I stick them in my teeth. There's a humongous helicopter above me, and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm on this house, and like, there's all, I'm outside. There's this all this patio furniture, and and like, I grab the dangling rope ladder, and the helicopter flies off with me hanging by my hand, and and I'm, I fly off hanging from the helicopter with the flowers in my teeth, and and we reveal that the pilot of the helicopter is. Bill Burr. No! I swear uh, to God. There's like a, a lake and the helicopter like swoops down and like dips me in the water like like pretty crazy. And Bill Burr's like, oh, sorry, buddy. You know, like, so now I'm all wet. And then it goes straight for telephone poles with, with electrical wires. I'm still got the flowers. And there's, and then we, we find the tour bus and the tour bus is cruising. And I let go of the ladder and land on the roof of the moving tour bus. And then there's an anvil. <laughs> yeah. And then spoiler alert, uh, like I, my, my, my jackass buddy Preston Lacey is driving the bus. He throws up a rope, which I catch while I'm on the roof. Bus is still driving and I'm, and I'm holding the rope and I like kind of rappel down the side and then wing into the door and hand her the roses. And I, and then I turn <laughs> to the camera and say, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for me. And the bus, that's how I get to the theater. <gasps> Wow. For, so, so this this medical professional steals epidural drugs, gets in disguise. He puts a four-inch needle in my spine. Okay, Steve-O, we have other questions. <laughs> I am um, I applaud your fiance for yeah. going through all of this. Oh, she's the one. Ma- she is absolutely she's the one. The only one. She's the only one, and this like <laughs> this special is so outrageously more f***ed up than Jackass ever could possibly be. Well, like, I keep I'm, sh- I'm stoked to see yeah, it, and I'm I glad keep... you survived. Yeah, and... thank you. Yeah, Um. okay. I mean, that was unreal. I feel like I just watched the whole special. He describes so much of it, there's going to be no need for people to watch it. Like, I understand steve is really excited about it and everything, but he is getting carried away here. Like, he's making it way too obvious. He's just doing podcasts to promote shit. I mean, I know that's a big reason why people make appearances on podcasts, you know, to promote themselves or whatever they have going on, but you can't make it this obvious. Like when you go on a podcast, your priority should be to make an entertaining podcast and be a good guest and have people interested in what you're saying. It shouldn't be to promote shit. But either way, right now, I don't know how many people care about this or really think about it. So I'm sure special will do fine especially since it's not just stand-up. I think that's also probably what he wanted to make very clear during these appearances. Like, it won't be the next gringo poppy, which is kind of unfortunate. But we'll see what happens. You know, I'm sure he'll be making some more appearances. Maybe we'll see him on Rogan. I don't think he's been on there since he tried to promote his butt wipes. Maybe Joe's just like, I don't want to have to deal with that. But let me know what you guys think about it all down in the comments. And then make sure you go check out my Patreon account if you want some extra content. There's a ton of stuff on there. I'll put a link in the description. And then hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you at the next video. And I'm like the ultimate attention whore of all time. <laughs> like, you got people paying attention. They've paid to pay attention to me. Yeah. That's the only thing. That's the, and you're going to mess with that? Uh-huh. Oh, you're, so so I, I call out hecklers like... 